Hi, welcome to Analog Output, where I am building a new synthesizer. I am building a new synthesizer. Why? Well, it's complicated, and in fact, I didn't realize that was what I was doing when I started doing it. What's happened is this. Here's my synth case, Cosmogenesis. There's a row for Eurorack modules down the middle. There's a space for the Mother 32 on the lower left. There's a Cosmo row at the top and a Cosmo half row at the bottom. And the Cosmo parts are just about full. There's room for one more little 25 millimeter module. That's it. It was time for a new case. So I built one. And here it is, nothing fancy. It's a box sized for two 30 inch rows of Cosmo, actually 30 and a half inches, which is not an even multiple of 25 millimeters. But then again, neither are some of my modules, so I don't worry about it. The sides and top are one by eight pine. The bottom and middle shelf are one by three and one by four pine pieces. Back is open except for a couple of one by three pieces, which are enough to make it decently rigid. All screwed together using pocket holes. Uh, there's a coat of cherry stain and a couple coats of polyurethane. And that's the box. For mounting the modules, I'm not a fan of using wood screws into wood rails. I like aluminum rails. So these are vector rails, which if you get a package of four of them and cut them to length, that's, uh, they're a good deal cheaper than anything else I've found. And the drawback of vector rails versus some of the other kinds of rails is that you cannot use M3 slide nuts. You have to use M2.5. And M2.5 slide nuts are hard to find. And I got mine from Pulp Logic. They're basically the only source I know of. And by the way, for mounting screws, I recently bought myself a tin of Nurleys by Bifaco. And these things are expensive, and for a long time I resisted getting them. I figured there must be something comparable available elsewhere at a lower price, but I've never found anything like them. Finally, I gave in, and I'm glad I did. There's a long, knurled, narrow head that lets you get a good grip and screw them in with your fingers. You have good control over the angle it goes in, so it doesn't just miss the slide nut and instead knock it off to the side out of reach. There's a washer on each one. These things are really easy to use, and they're so much less frustrating than trying to drive in a short machine screw with a screwdriver holding on to the tiny little head of the machine screw with the other hand. That can be very frustrating. I like these. I have no plans on ever going back. For power, I built a Frequency Central FC power supply. I left out the 5 volt regulator and the associated parts because I won't be using 5 volts in this case. Or if I am, I'm going to put a 5 volt regulator on the module board. The supply is wall wart powered and there's a barrel jack and a switch in the back of the case. The bus board is my version of a design I found online. I replaced the 16 pin shrouded headers with 10 pin ones, again because I only need plus and minus 12 volts and ground. So what to put in this case? Well, my next bunch of modules of course, but what should those be? Well, having this new case, I got to thinking about it, and I recalled that back in March when I started building Cosmo modules, I decided I had enough for the time being of the basic stuff, the oscillators, filters, voltage control amplifiers, envelope generators, low frequency oscillators, noise sources, and so on. And instead, I deliberately decided to focus on not exactly weird modules, but less common, more novel ones. So I built a gate processor, a sequencer, a quantizer, 
pedal interface, microcosmos, sloth chaos, mega module. Okay, some of those are kind of weird. But with the new case, I started thinking about it and I decided it was maybe time for the pendulum to swing back. You know, time to restore balance to the, for, to the, to the synthesizer. I decided I wanted to add some more of those bread and butter sort of modules that I'd been avoiding for the past few months. And then I thought about it some more and I had the realization that if I take an empty case and start putting basic modules into it, what I'm really doing is building a new synthesizer. Even if it's intended to extend the system I've got, it's also a fresh start. It's a, a thing in and of itself which I think is kind of exciting because I've never really built a full-scale synthesizer before. So even with all the modules I've built so far, I haven't built a low-frequency oscillator. The only LFO I have is in the Mother 32, and the only noise source I have is in the Mother 32, and the only MIDI to control voltage. So really all I've done so far is to extend the Mother 32 now I can build something that stands on its own. So I made a plan, a plan for a complete new synth. I don't know everything that will be in it. There's some gaps to be filled later. <clears throat> and my plans are always subject to change, of course. But for now, I think there will be the following. One low frequency oscillator, two envelope generators, one noise module, two voltage-controlled oscillators, one attenuator module, two voltage-controlled filters, one MIDI to CV, one fixed filter bank, one mixer, one multiples module, one dual voltage-controlled amplifier, and one output module. I think that makes for a pretty good basic analog monosynth. In fact, it's not too dissimilar to the module set in the 1973 Moog Model 15 synthesizer. Okay, next question is, what particular designs will I use? Well, I've made choices for most of the modules. Most of them will be more or less unmodified builds of existing circuits with commercially available circuit boards. Some will have minor modifications, and some are going to be revamped enough that I'm going to need to develop my own circuit boards for them. But I'll, I'll tell you the choices I've made as I go ahead with building them. All right, so what should I start with? What do you think I should build for the first modules here? Oh, trick question. I've already started. I've built three modules already. One is the attenuators, and that almost doesn't even count. It's so simple. There is no printed circuit board, just six jacks and three pots on a panel wired together, and that's it. Uh, another is the multiples, and here I built a module that was designed by Corey Torpin of the LMNC Discourse Group, and it's based on a buffered multiple circuit designed by Dave Jones. Corey laid out a PCB with two of the buffered multiples on it, one in and three out on each, and made a Cosmo format for a panel which also has two sets of passive multiples with four jacks each. And this brings up an issue. Corey's front panel is a nice one, but I made the decision that for Cosmo Drone, I want the modules to have a more or less uniform appearance. Basically, same color, same font, same general style. Contrast that to the sort of crazy quilt look of my first case. So I used Corey's panel, but I made an overlay for it to make it more consistent with all my others. So those are two of my first three Cosmodrome modules. And the third one I'm going to tell you about in my next video. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. And uh, I'll see you later, next time, on Analog Output.